Hi guys, once again, I am making another video because I feel like my last video I posted, I didn't really update as much as I could have possibly. And I was a little all over the place that day because I was having a lot of anxiety. And prior to making that video, I had taken an Ativan, which I hadn't taken an Ativan in well over a year prior to that day. So that's how you know the anxiety got bad because I stated that I'm anti medicine but that day was just like really really scary i had a really uncontrollable panic attack where there was just basically no choice and i didn't even take like a whole tablet like i cut it in half and then cut it in half a little bit more so that's how you know i'm a little weird about medication but um anyways in my first video i know i talked about going back to work because at the time i was still technically employed um and in december of last year i had to end up resigning from my job because i couldn't go back to work unfortunately um and it really really sucked um yeah it really bothered me bad because i feel like prior to the agoraphobia setting in work was one of my comfortable places and i think it was because i worked in a hospital um i was a lab assistant in a hospital so anytime like i would be on my way to work panicking but as soon as i got in the hospital i felt comfortable because i felt like if i panic super bad or if i faint pass out whatever the case somebody's gonna help me there's a nurse a doctor somebody's gonna help me um but i just wasn't strong enough unfortunately to go back to work and they had worked with me for so long and my only option was to resign at that point so it seems like after that happened that's when the agoraphobia hit me harder it was more of a struggle to get out because prior to that i was at least getting out practicing driving because i knew i had to get back to work so after having to quit it was kind of like my motivation just went downhill from there which is kind of sad to say because the motivation should be to want to get out of the house and live again but unfortunately it just wasn't enough to push me so from january this beginning of this year up until now i've been completely housebound um now i i can get out i can go in my backyard i can go in my front yard there have been times to where <coughs> excuse me i can go drive maybe down my block or back but there's always an urgency to rush back home so i would consider that housebound because you know, I'm not going grocery shopping. I'm not going to the gas station. I'm not going, you know, take my daughter to the park. I'm not really doing anything. Um, and as I talked about in my last video, I think recently I've been experiencing a little depression um, because it's been somewhat hard to get out of the bed. Um, I just feel myself just really lacking any motivation lately um sorry it's kind of hard to talk about this especially to the world but i feel like there's more people on youtube who understand what i'm going through besides the people i live with my parents and people around me the most i mean the only thing that they can offer me is take the medication take the medication and while i get that i probably do need medication but I'm sure there are other anxiety sufferers out there who just feel like they have anxiety to take your medication, unfortunately. Um, you create all these anxieties. You don't want to take medication. You know, you're afraid of what it might do to you or <clears throat> the side effects getting off of it. I think about all of those things. And um, as I said, I was prescribed Lexapro. And I've heard that it's a little bit more milder than any of the other antidepressants. Um, but I don't know how true that is. If you guys have some experience with Lexapro in particular, I would love if you guys could leave me some feedback because, um, yeah, at this point, I'm kind of going back and forth, really debating on taking it or not. I have it over there <laughs> just waiting for me to when I build up the courage to take it. Um, so we'll see. I have another aspect of my agoraphobia I don't think I talked about is staying at home by myself that sounds so crazy that a 23 year old can't stay at home by herself but 
I don't know, I just feel like I need somebody here with me at all times, especially because I have a daughter. She's sleeping right here. Um, especially because I have a kid and I just feel like if I start freaking out so bad, who the hell is going to help me out? Who's going to help calm me down? Um, if something tragic, you know, or, you know, God forbid, if something terrible were to happen, which it never has, I'm, I've never passed out or fainted, but for some reason, every anxiety, every panic attack, I just tell myself that this is the one that's going to be horrible. Um, but I just feel like I always need somebody here with me at all times, which is created a very big problem amongst my mom which is who's my safe person um she doesn't really have a life anymore and it makes me feel guilty because i'm trapping everybody in here with me which is something that unfortunately i can't necessarily control you know i didn't ask to be like this um this wasn't me two years ago you know almost two years ago now this has been going on Prior to this, I was working every day. I was going out with friends. I was driving wherever the hell I wanted to drive, taking my daughter places, and boom, this hits you and totally changes your life. And for people who, you know, think it's as easy as snapping out of it or taking some medication or just thinking happy thoughts, it's not that easy. It's not that simple. Um, people don't understand the daily daily struggle we go through like lately I've been waking up with anxiety I get nauseous I don't know if anybody's ever experienced that but I get so nauseous and I think it's just the anticipation of another day not knowing how my anxiety levels are going to be there's even been a couple mornings to where it gets the, uh, the, anx the anxiety and the nauseousness is so bad I'll throw up um, which is quite new for me because I've never, I didn't experience this when this first began, or not that I remember. Um, yeah, I've even having problems. It's kind of embarrassing, but I've even been having problems like standing in the shower for too long periods. I mean, I'll start panicking in the shower, like, oh my gosh, my heart's racing. You know, I'm getting lightheaded now. I'm thinking about it too much, paying attention to my breathing, and then of course it spirals from there. Once you are aware that your breathing is off, it feels like you're struggling for even more breath from there. Um, but yeah, it's totally hard to stay home by myself. Um, I mean, this, this disorder really, really is so horrible. I feel for anybody out there who struggles with this. And um, yeah, I just, I wouldn't wish this upon my worst enemy. I've heard that before. Everybody explains it the same way. We just, we feel so terrible that we wouldn't want anybody else to have to experience this. It's literally like we're confined, living in a jail cell that we create, unfortunately. Um, but it's, it's that tough. It's really that tough. I don't know if anyone else is sensitive to the heat too. Because, boy, let me tell you, we've had a heat wave here the last week or so. It's over now. It's still a little warm. But we had a really bad heat wave a week ago. And I was cooped up. We don't have central air. So I was cooped up in my dad's room. He has a window AC. And could not leave that room. I mean, the heat aggravates my anxiety so bad. I feel like I'm just being smothered. Like, I can't take a good deep breath. Like, at any minute, I just feel like I'm going to pass out or something. Does anybody else get that in the heat? Like, the heat just aggravates your symptoms? I don't know if it's just me or not. There's got to be somebody else out there. Um, I've still been reading a lot of self-help books. The one I'm currently on is Claire Weeks' Help and Ho Help, uh, Hope and Help for Your Nerves. It's a really popular one, and I'm sure millions of people have... Um, millions of people i'm sure plenty of people have heard of it um she's really popular she has audio tapes too but i'm just reading her book right now and it doesn't seem like any of the self-help books are working anymore i mean they all give great advice but i just i don't know like i don't know how to put the knowledge to use you know if that makes sense because i can read it and i'll feel yay i'm confident in the house reading this information like i feel exhilarated i feel like oh my gosh i'm ready to tackle it and then i go outside and i'm clamming up and afraid all over again um makes no sense so um yeah i don't know i guess i'm kind of looking for somebody out there 
there's got to be somebody out there who experienced this got through it please tell me what you did whether it have been medication natural remedies exercising you know hypnosis whatever it was i'm willing to try anything at this point if that means that i can go back to living a functioning life not being afraid to step out outside get in my car you know go wherever i want to go um because the longer you stay like this i've you know i've seen i've been here for over a year the longer you put it off the worse it's gonna get and you know i know it won't get any worse than this i hope not but um i pray it doesn't but um i'm just ready to get out of this hole and go back to living life normally so if somebody can give me any advice please 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 i would greatly 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 appreciate hearing some success stories people who have moved on with their lives and gotten over agoraphobia